there are three main points that I might highlight regarding how the syllabus structure has changed. Uh, the first and most obvious one is that all topics and subtopics are now categorised under two broad overarching themes which are structure and reactivity. The idea being that there's a con conceptual relationship between these two themes. Uh, structure determines reactivity which in turn uh, transforms structure. The second point to highlight is that uh, essential ideas in the current course have been replaced by guiding questions for each subtopic which frame the learning um, in each particular subtopic and also provide a bit of a broader scope uh, for exploration uh, for how we um, plan and structure the course. The third point to mention um, is you'll find linking questions in each subtopic which make reference to skills, uh, the nature of science and understandings from other subtopics. There's been a considerable reduction in terms of the content in the new course and the majority of this comes from the removal of the optional topics. It's worth noting however that some specific points from different optional topics have now been integrated into the new course. For example, polymers, uh, fuels, ocean acidification, chromatography, uh, to name just a few of them. In terms of other changes from the current content, there are a few minor uh, edits. For example, Lewis structures are now called Lewis formulas, uh, and you won't see the EZ classification of organic compounds anymore. Uh, but apart from that, most of the content is, is pretty similar. Uh, it's probably also worth noting that there's a bit more of an emphasis on skills in the new course. Uh, and these skills are uh, categorised under tools and the inquiry process and you'll find explicit connections to those in the linking questions in each subtopic. The new course has been designed to offer a little bit more flexibility and freedom in terms of planning pathways through the course. So now instead of topics 1 to 21, we have our topics organised under two overarching themes, which are structure and reactivity. So in thinking about how to plan these pathways, uh, I think there's probably uh, three main considerations. First of all, of course, we want to build a logical progression of knowledge as we move through the course. Secondly, we might want to identify particular uh, subtopics or understandings uh, that warrant uh, coverage before the internal assessment, now called the scientific investigation. So things like uh, rates of reaction, stoichiometry uh, tend to appear pretty commonly um, in the IA. Uh, and thirdly, it might depend a little bit on whether you teach separate standard level and higher level classes or perhaps a combined group. So on balance, uh, taking these different factors into account, I would imagine that most teachers will probably start with uh, structure one and structure two at the beginning of the course and then perhaps prioritize uh, subtopics uh, from reactivity so 1.1 1.2 and 2.2 which cover things like stoichiometry energy changes and rates of reaction uh, because these are kind of particularly common topics that appear in the uh, internal assessment 